Okay, good morning everyone. Um, my program that I was, wanted to talk today got of course a little bit thrown out the window by a little bit take is firing, but more on that later. I just wanted to talk quickly about the two Monday night games and then highlight two Sunday games that I actually didn't talk about uh, yesterday. Um, first Monday night game was of course a big one between Manchester City playing at Wembley against Tottenham, it's a Tottenham home game and first of all the Tottenham Stadium is still not ready and so you had to play in Wembley where just this weekend, actually in fact yesterday, um, there was an NFL game uh, played between Jacksonville and the Eagles. Um, yep, Eagles won and the field is ruined. Um, it's actually also interesting to see because when you're watching an NFL game you don't get how narrow the field is. Even if you're watching the stadium, um, yes, the sidelines are huge, uh, but the field is really, really narrow compared to a soccer pitch. And yeah, for me, Wembley, you still, it has still this um, reputation of having the best grass, the finest green. Now, yesterday, it just looked horrible. Uh, the game also looked very interesting color-wise. Um, and I thought about it and then it made kind of sense. Tottenham playing, of course, in their home kits. I love the Tottenham kits. I just have to say it. It's um, the white when they went comp when we were paired with navy pants. This is a really nice look. There have been Tottenham kits in the past that I didn't like, but this one is one again that I like a lot. Do I wish that the sponsor was also navy? Probably, but you know, the red is not out of character. So. Uh, it still fits in there. And then Manchester City were playing in the third jerseys, which is a very interesting color combination with the purple shirt and the orange pants and of course the orange sash. Um, I honestly, part, part of me should not like it. Clemson University, you know what I'm saying? But I think it looks alright. Uh, it just is not Manchester City colors. That's, I think, the only that I have with that. So yeah, that is uh, was the Jersey matchup. The matchup itself, um, you know, Mares, it's Mares, uh, got a very quick goal, a beautiful move over the left side and then um, netting it in and of course he dedicated the goal to the uh, Leicester owner who died in the helicopter crash. I'm not sure how much you can see. We have sun. That's the nice thing now with the new time that in the morning it's very sunny. But if the sun is in your back, you don't see much. But so he dedicated the goal uh, to the former owner of Leicester because he played for Leicester when they made the championship. Uh, yeah, that's a gutting. That cannot feel right. Uh, I don't know what it will mean for Leicester in general, but I think. As he was so universally loved, I'm afraid that this will have an impact on the Leicester team. Kane could have shortly thereafter made it 1-1, but it was all Manchester City from there. So uh, they had chances and you have to say they should have converted and made more out of the chances. And yeah, I think Lamela in the end had a big chance to uh, make it 1-1, but honestly this would not have been deserved. I think this was really all the way Manchester City. Uh, they won the game and now we have the unique situation that there are three teams on top. I'm gonna fill in gas after finishing my thought here. Uh, three teams on top, unbeaten within two points of each other. Manchester City uh, level on points with 24, with Liverpool two uh, points behind. You have Chelsea. Uh, very interesting, makes it Definitely worth watching the Premier League. I'm gonna fill in gas and I'll be right back. So I'm back. Gas is ridiculously expensive. It cost me seven euros more than usual. I mean, like I'm paying seven euros more for this little car to fill in gas than I did half a year ago. It's crazy. Oh well. I can talk about now just a guilty party. I think it's the big egg with the tiny end. Okay, Premier League. So on top it's also interesting because you know you have the three teams unbeaten on top but even uh, then behind Arsenal had a great run that was now cut short with 
uh, just a draw that they had yesterday. Uh, then in addition, uh, Tottenham, although they lost now, is just one point behind Arsenal. And then you have Watford and Bournemouth, I think, sitting at 19 points. I think Arsenal has 21, Tottenham 20. So um, there is something ahead. Uh, of course, I the one game that I, I watched the highlights then uh, this morning of uh, Manchester United against Everton. Uh, because Manchester United seems to be the team that if they can calm the storm and seemingly, I know I've been calling for Mourinho to be sacked, but uh, seems to me they almost don't want to do that. And so yeah, the players have to band together kind of and you cannot get the manager fired. And there's something to be said about it. I'm not sure if it's the, if it's the lack of alternatives or if it is the board realizing, you know, this will cost us a lot of money, or they just want to stick it out with Mourinho, which to me is the least likely of the three. Although that, 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 that would be the most noble one, I also gotta say. Anyway, uh, so they gotta pull it together, and I think they had actually everything that you need from uh, showing it. Was, it was a decent showing by Manchester, Manchester United. I actually like the Everton shirts. For me, Manchester United against Everton should be a much bigger matchup than it is currently. Uh, and it was a mid-table matchup now. So, Manchester United, I think, got the win. Uh, I think I want to say 2-0. I think so. I mean, uh, Ever Everton had chances. The first goal I know was a Pogba penalty rebound. He, uh, he hit the, the post. Pickford was in the corner. Bigfoot was in the corner and um, just bounced back to Pog 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 Bahut with the net and slotted it home. Well, that's I think alright. And then um, the second one was by Martial. I know that there was a huge chance by uh, Everton to uh, make up a goal, but overall I think this was a deserved win by Manchester United. Yeah. I cannot say much more than that. Uh, I think it was a well-deserved victory. And so, yeah, and on the bottom of the table, I I know I need to uh, talk a little bit about, about the bottom. I always talk about the championship race, uh, which to me is always the first thing that I, that I look at it, unless my team is involved in the bottom race. But what I, it's a little bit disheartening to see the, uh, uh, Newcastle, uh, Fulham, down there because I think Newcastle actually plays well and they shouldn't be down there but they had a horrible beginning of the season schedule so yeah what can you do? The other Monday night game that was kind of a big one and yesterday I didn't watch any games if I would have watched one it would have been the, uh, the Tottenham Manchester City matchup um, but Lazio Inter I, you always had the feeling you know how this one is going just because uh, Lazio, while not bad per se, they beat the teams that they should beat and they lose against the teams that they shouldn't lose against. Uh, it's that, that's the pattern for them. And yeah, they had no, they didn't chance, stand, stand a chance against Inter. Um, as much as it hurts me to say, uh, Icardi got kind of an early goal and then uh, Brozovic made it 2-0, Icardi made it 3-0. I mean, it's a lot of loss, loss destruction. I gotta say though, uh, it looked, it was a very pleasing matchup, uh, also with the colors, because Lazio played in their wonderful home uh, jerseys. And Inter, with what you would, would expect. And I sometimes wonder why not more why don't we see more matchups where, you know, if you have a dark blue against a light blue, that's a valid matchup. Uh, but people want to avoid it. I still maintain that if France plays in the real first uh, kit, white pants, red socks, and dark blue, they can play against Euro Uruguay in the first kit. I don't think that there's too much of a color clash. Just saying, I think they, 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 they took it contrast well. And I saw a few other instances. I even think that Manchester City could have played in their home kit yesterday, although their, their light blue is a little bit more white than um, others. Wow, I have a free lane, yoo -hoo. So 
so yeah, Inter winning three in a row. Um, no, no, winning three nil, three three nil now. Level on points with Napoli. And the only thing I have to say is I just don't get how Inter with very little. I mean, they are finding now their way. I think the good result, the good run of results that they had, helped them now uh, finding the form. But they have won games that they never should have won. That's all I can say. And yeah, they are now, I think they're sitting in second spot. Unbelievably. Well, that's all. Ahead, ahead, ahead of the season, you would have probably uh, thought that Inter will be second uh, or third. And that's where they are currently. I'm also happy to see Milan now in fifth and maybe if they beat Genoa on Wednesday. That's not an easy matchup. They can even move further and then yeah, Milan also looks better. I mean, you knew it's always a game back. You're always a game back and then you're sitting mid-table and it's very tight. And you're kind of starting with this handicap. And the last matchup that I wanted to mention from the Bundesliga yesterday, and then we go to Lopetegi, uh, is of course Werder Bremen losing at home to Bayer Leverkusen 2 to 6, which is a result as unexpected as it can be, and also the way the game went. I, Leverkusen missing many chances, and just at the moment where I thought now Werder is going to take advantage of that, they make the 1 0 and then they make it a 2 0 and make it 3 0 before halftime. And then Verda comes storming back uh, within, I think, a couple of minutes. They have it down to 2 3. Fortunately for Leverkusen, they also struck back very soon. They have it 2 4. I mean, they could have made it 4 0 just before that. Uh, there is 2 4, 2 5, 2 6. Uh, that result is about as unexpected as anything because Verda was one of the informed teams and Leverkusen really was struggling. Um, also, I gotta say, Leverkusen, I have not known that they play in light blue jerseys against Werder. That seemed very, very odd. I think, yeah, I don't know. Probably, probably if the all, all white wall would not, would not have worked that well either, because Werder Bremen has, of course, white pants. Still, remarkable result, a uh, remarkable game. That's all I can say to that weird jersey matchup. Leverkusen in blue just doesn't look right. And it also tells me that, yeah, I really need to do another jersey review uh, for Bundesliga, Premier League, and La Liga, I think. Uh, Italy and France, I have all the way through. And the same thing that I said for England, there are a few teams down there. I mean, that, that was now a mid-table clash. Yeah, mid Leverkusen is now making the way up. Werder Bremen is still in front, but you know the way the results went, it will be Dortmund against Bayern, and I think Bayern will eventually take over. I think by Christmas they are in the lead, and then I won't relinquish that. Although Dortmund played spectacular, but if you lose so stupidly the two points against Hertha, it doesn't look very well. Okay, yeah, the team's down there, Stuttgart, Schalke, but now Lopetegi. Uh, he got the sack, and I think no one, uh, it's to no one's surprise, and Santiago Solari is now taking over as uh, an interimistic coach. Uh, Solari, of course, played for Real Madrid and has some success in the youth at the moment. Uh, what shall I say to Lopetegi? You saw it in my first video. My first video that I did for this channel was Lopetegi again in the second half of the World Cup. And for a long time, if I make the playlist, there was Lopetegi there getting, you know, within four months, this is a horrible spell. I mean, he looked so pretty being the coach for Spain. Uh, take it. We're talking potential World Cup winners. Probably they would not have won it, but potential World Cup winners. He throws it away because he takes the Real Madrid job uh, again. The one thing I have to say is that Florentino Perez uh, took him from the job ahead of the World Cup. Thus jeopardizing um, the Spanish national team. And then in addition, 
uh, now not sticking. I mean, he got what he, he, he deserved. It is just the worst type of preparation that you can have even for even for La Liga. Yes, they played spectacular at the beginning of the season, but now it seemingly fell all apart. And yeah, I think Lopetegui, it will be hard for him to get another job. I think after being sacked by Real Madrid this way, uh, probably a Valencia song that is down and you know, if they find a coach, maybe he can get a job like that. But to me, he's a little bit radioactive. I mean, he showed very poor decision making uh, when it came to leaving the Spain job. I mean, just ahead of the World, World Cup, you don't do any negotiations, not even your manager. Wait after the World Cup. You can maybe say, yes, I think I want to take that, but now you cannot do that. It's an absolute no go. And Real Madrid is very well served by not getting, by not getting results. Now, of course, the big question is who will take over as a Real Madrid coach. I actually think it will be Solari. I mean, he's taking over right now. Uh, he has, I think within two weeks, Real Madrid has to appoint a uh, full-time coach. You cannot have an interim coach for longer than two weeks. Um, I know that they want to have Conte, but from all that I hear, Conte really endeared himself to the Spanish players at Chelsea already. So, everyone knows that Conte is, how to say, an annoying coach. And I think uh, he is a coach that can take a team that is, uh, maybe you would say a little bit limited, has a few star players, but you know that is not the, uh, not all of star players. I think for that Conte would be perfect. I honestly think if Conte took the Milan job, Milan would look wonderful. I really think that, uh, of course, Conte has a heavy price tag and I'm not sure how the Milanisti would take to him since he is this Juventus icon. But you know, uh, that if it's successful, it can be worked with. And given that Milan is so and so with former players, beloved players, tennis coaches, also probably, you know. It's time to let go of this philosophy. Uh, I just don't see Conte working at Real Madrid. Because, you know, you have those big personalities in there. And I'm thinking mainly about Sergio Ramos, who basically, I always have to have, to have the feeling, he is he's way past his prime. I gotta say that. Uh, he is inspiration going forward, and that's the one thing. I mean, uh, they have so many uh, defending players that go for Marcelo. Uh, on every counter, there is um, Sergio Ramos, and then on the back, it's always a little bit shaky. And uh, Varan, who is a great defender, is also la uh, lacking form lately, so I don't know. Uh, to me, the counter signing. It's a little bit brute force. I think the Real Madrid squad needs. How did they have success? With Zidane, who did not have the great tactical acumen, but he's a good man manager. Because all the players know Zidane is an absolute star, and I think he knows how to massage their egos well and gets the best out of them. I mean, three Champions Leagues in a row. Give me a break. It's unbelievable. Uh, I gotta give it to Zidane. I, that was when Zidane was playing for Real Madrid. That's probably the only time that I ever preferred Real Madrid over Barcelona. Because I like Zidane so much. Maybe not so much as a coach, because I found his Real Madrid teams a little bit lacking. But yeah, back to the situation. Um, Solari, from what I hear, has great uh, soccer knowledge. <laughs> Gotta see how it is. Uh, the other name that I hear is Mourinho. And yeah, we talked about Mourinho. Maybe that could be the chance for Manchester United to get a, a new coach. I don't know who Manchester United would want to have. I think a Conte could also work at Manchester United. Ah, Conte is a hot commodity at the moment. I think he's. Um, I think the problem for Conte is the price tag. But let's say Mourinho goes back to Real Madrid. Uh, a move that no one would understand as well. Because, yes, 
his misfortune was that when he was at Real Madrid, Barcelona was by far the best team in Europe and took most of the titles from him. And I think he did. He won a league, he won a cup in the league in three years. It's kind of a meager return. Uh, and in addition, this was the time when, you know, there was. After the World Cup 2010, you had the feeling that the Real Madrid and Barcelona players are actually with each other. Come Mourinho and it all becomes a big mess. Uh, and from that, the El, El Clasico became uh, a matter of hatred again, which it anyway had, but he added even more oil to the fire. So, I don't think either Conte or Mourinho would solve the Real Madrid problem. Um, Santiago Solari, I have no idea, but honestly, I would like to see that. I would like to see that rather, than, but you know, on the on the other side, um, let Florentino Perez go down. Uh, I would. My preferred option now, being really um, mean, is that Real Madrid. Takes the takes Mourinho and frees up Manchester United to get Conte or something like that, uh, and then it all goes up in flames. I just think for what uh, Florentino Perez did to the Spanish national na national team, he really deserves that because yes, they lost now to England, but look at the, how Spain has been playing. Even against England, you never even three 0 down, you never had the feeling that uh, this game is done quite the opposite I actually think that was uh, if they got to get the penalty this ends 3-3 if not um, a win for Spain they're that good uh, this could have easily been a World Cup winner uh, that's a very interesting game. so yeah that's it from my perspective uh, for today let me know what you think about my thoughts here do you agree? I think the Real Madrid coach is now. It's it's so funny because uh, this used to be a job that everyone wanted, one, one, one might have, but with all the pressure that's going on there, I think no one wants to really have this job. I don't even think that uh, Conte really wants to have the job. So we'll see. Again, let me know your thoughts on all these topics, the games yesterday, uh, Real Madrid. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.